Hello and welcome. I hope you're safe and well. Today's exciting episode is not a sewing episode. It's a visiting a fabric store episode. And we look at zips and ribbons and all different things. But eventually I do get to the fabric, I promise you. And I even bought a couple of things. So yeah, skip to the end if you want to know what I bought. I just bought two fabrics. It's really not that exciting. Ooh, buttons. Anyway, today's exciting episode is a look around the fabric store. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. Well, in a perfect world, I would have made a, tw a tweed jacket. But as you can see, we've just got three on the sideboard that you have seen before well, that I made. Two of them are semi-recent and the middle one I made back in December. So yeah, I haven't got around to making another jacket quite yet because my workbench is an absolute mess at the moment. I've been making vests all week in all different versions. So I've got all the pattern pieces, all the scraps of fabric, all the different fabrics everywhere and I just took one look at it and I was like no not cleaning that today so we're visiting a fabric store yay I've completely forgot to film the outside of the store so you know what it looks like but it's basically you go down this escalator into this whole entire basement and this is me just filming the pretty buildings instead the pretty old ones I love this one it's so gorgeous I would totally live in a an apartment in there it's so cute. Anyway, let's go shopping. So here we are in the store. It's just like this massive basement store. And um, I think this is like the little bits that you stick on your wedding invitations, little flowers and or crafting things. Oh, buttons. And yeah, so um, this is me just getting distracted. The All the fabrics up the other end of the store. And oh, autumn leaves I actually have some really nice autumn leaves that I bought off like Etsy or something a couple of years ago and then I had to um force myself to stop buying leaves and fabric flowers oh those ones are good I I just love fluoro yellow and a uh, fluoro or um green because like they're such a challenge to work with so yeah this is me just you never know what you find in these aisles because I mean you know ooh, mannequin heads I want to make a garland so like, when I was young I worked at a wedding florist because both my parents were sick and when you work in weddings um, with fresh flowers you have to work sort of 24 7 a couple of days a week and then you get all of the week off and that way it was available for appointments and things butterflies and um, so, yes, I finally found the beading aisle and little turtles. Aren't they cute? So, um, yeah, I was going to make like floral head pieces. I was really, really good at the floral, like the really detailed stuff. Also the bridal bouquets. But yeah, the floral head piece, for the little girls and everything. More beads and ooh, shells. It's like these big jars. They're quite good. But you have to be careful. You can't wear something with shells on it if you're going through international customs. So, yeah, same with wooden beads. If, um, well, in particular, um, countries like uh, Australia where they, they've just had these massive d biological disasters. So now they just won't let anything in. Like you can't bring plants in, you can't bring wooden beads in or things like that. Cause yeah, look up cane toads in Queensland, but also bumble like European bees, European wasps. They introduce these species to get rid of something else or rabbits. And they just go because they've never really had a climate like Australia. So they just go crazy. Oh, these bag of beads, like they're so ugly. But you know my Kandinsky jacket? I like to buy like challenging bags of beads like this. And then I'm like, oh, how could I use these on a jacket or on a, you know, a beaded handbag or something like that? So, yeah. And now I see through the other aisle some googly eyes. And so I went and had a look at them. They just have all these different... It's actually a puppet making section. And right here to the right of it, there's all these like Raggedy Ann wig, like curly fake hair. And it's very weird. 
Anyway, so now we've found the sequin section. I like that sort of lime green one, but also there's some nice mixes. I think I've got the pink and purple mix one and tiny little sea beads and I don't know. I just like looking at the weird colour combinations and it usually jars me. I'm like, oh, I've got a tweed I could use. And then I think of all the beads that I have. It just makes you think about your own collection in a different way, I think. Ooh, I like those teal coloured um, sequins. They're pretty. I forget to go back and get them, but they are rather lovely. And then I finally moved on. Oh, this is like, I love how everything is colour coordinated. And this is like the crafting section. So at the bottom, they've got felt. And then they've got all these pipe cleaners and uh, pom-poms. And this is another section. It's like paper mache or something. So they've got lots of giraffes and weird, creepy um, koala bears. Like if you painted that in glow in the dark, the owls are cute. The owls are very cute. And then oh, there's a couple of unicorns up there, but you like that you have to mount on the wall. They don't really make sense when they're lying down. And down in the row, in the very bottom one, there was a pineapple. Isn't it cool? I think this is the coolest one. They're all about $20 or slightly less. And um, yeah, but the spikes out of the top are a little bit wobbly. So yeah. Also, I don't need more junk in my house. So I tried to not film other people because I think everyone went out and partied hard last night because people were looking rough. Oh, and I found the quilting section, quilting cotton section. And so, yeah, I'm just going along going, oh, I like that one. I like that one. Sunflowers. They're quite cute. It's very vintage in a 1970s kind of way, isn't it? That one's pretty, but it looks a little bit like a bad spread. That's lovely. I like all the aqua ones. They're just so pretty. And, <laughs> oh, look, it, I, I feel like this um, store needs an owl section because later on I'll show you some owl. Look, it's Girl Guide Cookies from America. I have this one here, the periwinkle blue one. And, ooh, that one's nice. But um, I was in halfway through saying something, wasn't I? Oh, these ones are pretty. I think a, a vintage dress out of them would be lovely. And then that's cute. But again, it kind of looks like a 1970s bed sheet. That one's pretty on the end. They're just so many lovely ones. I kind of, it would be awesome if you could just choose. There's so much of that Girl Scout cookie fabric it's actually from joanne's so i guess they just buy it in bulk or maybe the stores are all owned by the same people it's tulips white tulips sketch tulips on a black background that one's very pretty and some poppies i've got so many lovely patterns and prints polka dots very cute i've got a yellow one like that i might have bought it from here actually very pretty. The different colours look good together. But, oh, they're so nice. Oh, it's little robots. That's cute. Okay, now we've made it to the trim section. I should have taken more, like, wide shots of the whole of the place, but I didn't want to get, I don't know, <laughs> everyone looked like they were having a pretty rough morning, so I didn't want to film it, like inadvertently film someone, so I couldn't get any big shots, just sort of, these are cute. Again, I love how they're in colour order. <laughs> Feathers. Some of them are just so beautiful. Some of them are a little average, but some of them are just, I think these ones would be quite good for like the ones that look a little bit like rope or braid, I think they'd really be really good for trim on a Chanel style jacket. This whole section here. But if you have made your jacket, um, a lot of people get excited and they buy all the ingredients like the silk for the lining, the tweed for the jacket and the... Um, <laughs> this is me trying to make the fringe move. It's so pretty. 
It's just so pretty. I'm not sure you'd use the fluoro yellow one or the Sonia fluoro red one there, but they're pretty much my favourite. Oh, and um, this is quilting cotton at the other end and it's got books on it. Aren't they sweet? I would definitely like a, a shirt made out of that. It would be so pretty. And now I found the, I think this is sort of an extension of the trim section but different colors. Yeah. So as I was saying, if you're going to make your jacket, don't buy the trim, make the jacket first, then measure out the trim because you need about two and a half or three times more trim than you assume you're going to need. The a number of people who've said, oh no, I only bought this tiny amount of trim. And then I realized it has to go around the back. It has to go around the back of the neck. It's, it's, you need a lot more than you think you do. So, um, yeah, definitely. Or, I mean, if you <laughs> don't mind the cost, then buy like three times as much as you think you'll need. But yeah, I would just make the jacket first because sometimes you look at a tweed and I think I know what it's going to look like. And this is the lace section. Oh my gosh, some of these laces are so beautiful. But lace is so expensive that, I don't know, it's like, would you buy one length of this or would you buy one length of fabric? They're kind of the same price. And I'm like, eh, I'll just buy the fabric and make a pretty dress. But um, yeah, so yeah, when you buy tweed, it looks different as a big piece bit of fabric and then when you sort of cut it up into all the small bits required for a Chanel style jacket it just I don't know it just changes its nature a little bit and the colors can look quite different and often when I buy a tweed I'm like oh I'm going to use like the red beads on it or I'm going to use the blue beads on it for sure but then when I make it up I'm like actually I think purple and black beads would look really, really amazing on this jacket. And like I would not have thought of that just looking at it previously. So long story short, if you buy your trim before the jacket is made, you might end up wanting a different colour accent for the trim. And also you probably won't know how to measure the correct amount because you really have to make it first. And then we're in the Goodman thread section. Oh, I just love how they're all in colour cord. I mean, I know that's the way that the the display stand makes you put them in, but still, ooh, sparkly thread. So pretty. And this is where all the different needles and, and all the bits and bobs are. I was going to show you my favourite type of um, beading needle, but they hadn't, didn't have any there. Look how big these buttons are. Like those ones are regular size buttons. And then they've got these massive ones. So if you have a clown costume and then they've got these random miniatures, I'm not really sure what they're, oh, metallic beads. But these ones are massive. So yes, I guess if you've got one of those coats that just have one button, then those ones would be good for that. And then I've got some novelty ones down the bottom. And then we find the button aisle. Oh my gosh, this is these are the expensive buttons. They're so there's like a chart with them. They're like, God, don't open them. Please do not open the tubes. But you can you can see in them. And the one on the top is obviously um the sample. And then yeah, these will be really beautiful for a Chanel style jacket. Or, or like a really beautiful coat. There's some gorgeous ones. So this um, sort of emerald one with gold on the outside. I think I come to it as the, like that red one there, but there's an emerald version of it. There it is. And this is me looking at the prices. I think it was $8.99 or $9.99, something like that, just under $10 per bead which seems like a lot to me, but I mean, if you're going to wear the coat for the rest of your life or the jacket, then I think it's a pretty good investment. And there's so many different colours. The green section isn't very big, but the gold and the, oh, I'm, <laughs> this is me checking. Um, There's a bamboo one there and I've got a like plastic bamboo handle that I want to turn into a purse, like a handbag. And I might do a, I might just have it open at the top, but I might do a flap over the top. There's another tube of those beautiful gold buttons with the, 
there's just so many ones that would be perfect for a Chanel style jacket. It's a really good selection. I don't personally like buttons on my Chanel style jackets because I kind of make them to use up my bead collection and if you had buttons on there you'd use up less beads basically and also I just I don't know I don't like the look but I do like the look on other people but I'm just so determined to use up my entire bead collection that yeah I do like when you go to um antique markets you know on the weekends I like looking at antique buttons. I have a <laughs> I have a collection of antique buttons. Oh, these are cute. So it's like little strings of sequins. So if you have a mini Christmas tree, this is where you come to buy tinsel for it. It's not really tinsel, but and now we've got the ribbon section. I will be getting to more fabrics, but I just love ribbons. They're so pretty. But again, they're just like I mean, you can just buy fabric. <laughs> <laughs> instead of a couple of yards of ribbon but they are pretty to look at when I was a kid I just used to have loads of different colored ribbons to put on my plaits and pigtails they're so pretty and zips again I love how they're in color coordinated order and oh okay I think um th this is so weird they've got these like vintage looking ribbons and one of them has like it looks like a measuring tape I guess that would be convenient. But um and I'm about to find the owl ones. Here we go. So there's green owls, there's lime green owls, like the apple green ones, and then there's some red owls here. See, I totally think they should have an owl section in this store. Oh, and there's this random section that's just all swans. So if you really like swans, this is the place. They've just got really specific themes it's very strange anyway so more flowers and um yeah I guess you could use them I would pull them apart and stitch each one on individually and here we go I found the they've got like obviously around the edge that I forgot to show you sorry I, I do show you some fabrics that aren't on sale but this is the sale table for um I think this was furnishing fabrics and there is a velvet in here that's absolutely gorgeous and I think it was due, reduced to ten dollars and um I forgot to go back for it. <laughs> I got distracted by the other table, the other sale table. But um, this is a fluffy section. You can't really tell how fluffy they are. They're super fluffy, these fabrics. Completely impractical. But look, you could make a big bird coat. And some, I kind of want trousers that are the, you know, how big bird's legs are orange and pink. That would look cute. And here we go. I found the section with the regular fabrics. I think these were rayons or synthetic crepes or something. You know, the popular ones. They had some really pretty ones, but I don't generally... I prefer to work with cotton. I just like cotton. I mean, if I want to work with a tricky fabric, I'll make a tweed jacket. Tweed can be the expensive tweeds just sort of fall apart because they're so loosely woven. Oh, and this is this random Halloween fabric. It's blue. Halloween fabrics are supposed to be green and orange and purple. Anyway, I found the chul section beige and pale blue. They're so beautiful. This one is interesting. It's got fluoro and pastels. That would be interesting challenge to make a jacket out of. And then I'd probably beat it. I've got some fluoro green and fluoro yellow beads. So, yeah, basically I think about the... Oh, and this is this random disco section. Disco, I think it's like dance fabrics, but they're called disco sequin. They're just like painted on. They're not actual sequins. And then these are some more florals. There are some really pretty ones in here. Oh, these were knits, actually. This really cute one with trees on it, but they're knits. And I don't really make anything with knits fabric. And now we're at the sale table. This is amazing. There are so many tools here. And there's also netting, but it's soft netting. I like netting that's got a lot of structure to it. But these colours are amazing. If you wanted to make like a ball gown or something, 
these colors are just absolutely perfect for it. Judging by the, yeah, randomness of the colors. And then I went around the other side of the table and there were all these ones here, like this Dior gray, Dior blue. They're just amazing. And that sort of marigold color, as well as the ugly sort of acidy yellow. They're amazing. Oh, and yeah, so I bought two things, but that was it for the store. I kind of forgot to go to the knitting section and I guess that's sections. a good excuse. I can go back and do another um, fabric store visit if you want. Anyway, these are the two that I got. They're from the sale table at the end. I kind of focused when I was filming. I was like, ooh, tools and netting. But um, yeah, these were also on there. I had to go digging for this one. It was like down the bottom. I think it's like, you know, um, picnic tablecloths, how they're sort of plastic with fabric and they're mushed together and it's like one thing. The, on the left there is the fabric that I bought for in January, was it? For the Desperately Seeking Susan capsule collection. But this, it was, it was so cheap. It was like $5 a yard. Unbelievably, they couldn't sell this. Yeah, it, so I think it's like a picnic tablecloth, but it's snakeskin. <laughs> so anyway, I'm uh, predictably, I'm going to make a jacket out of it, like a Chanel style jacket out of it. And then I also bought a yard of this. This is actually much, uh, more expensive and it's cotton, but I just love um, lemon print cottons. I just think they're so vintage and pretty. So I'm going to do that um, summery cotton reversible jacket. I'm going to do that in this fabric and I just think it would look so pretty. Maybe with a yellow polka dot on the other side. And um, yeah, this is me showing you the what my workbench looks like. I wasn't exaggerating when I said it. it's just bits of pattern pieces and um, scraps of fabric and bits of fabric as well. Because I was like trying to work out reversible jackets, which two would go together. Because when you do the hand stitching, you have to um, like, you can only use one color thread. So both sides have to use the same color thread. So I'm just like trying to work out which ones well, look, but also you want when the cuffs turn up, you want the two fabrics to sort of clash nicely or match or something. So, yeah, this is just highlights, a highlight reel at the end. So, yeah, that was Lincraft Fabric Store in Melbourne City in Australia. So I've... I get quite a few people asking to see what a fabric store looks like. Kind of like all fabric, big fabric stores kind of look the same. Those butterflies are so cute. So yeah, but there you go. You can see, as I said, I do tend to just focus on the things that I think are cute, or quirky or interesting or just straight up weird. So if you have any special requests, then I can go back and... <laughs> actually look at other things the, uh, next time they have some yeah I think there's like a homewares section and at Christmas they have a massive Christmas section and at one point they had all these um trims beads cards with strings of beads on them and I bought a few because I want to make a um a lesage style tweed with all these um different laces and rows of beads in there and anyway so I bought that but there's also a whole knitting section and obviously loads of fabrics that I didn't focus on I really should have filmed more fabric shouldn't I but I don't know the the lace sections and the braid sections they're all in color coordinated order whereas the fabrics are like they're all prints so I don't know the quilting section is in nice colour order because when you're quilting, you kind of, I gather you have to um, sort of mix them all together. You're specifically using the types of colour rather than what the prints are. So you look at colour first, then prints, whereas with fashion fabrics, it's sort of like the design is more important than you know, you're not going in gen generally. Most people aren't going in and like, I need a print, but it has to be on a specific blue base or it has to be as, oh, I love those beads, uh, buttons. They're so pretty. Yeah. 
Anyway, I have a Chanel jacket to make. I promise that will be the next episode that you see. Promise, promise. Oh my goodness, I have to clean up that absolute pigsty of a workbench that I have. Ugh. I mean, I'm glad I did all those, drafted all those patterns for the vests. That was really useful to have so many. And now no matter what size my scrap of leftover fabric is, I'll have a vest pattern that um, fits to it. So that is good. But ugh, now I have to fold them all down. And I think I've done a good job of writing on each of the patterns, first version, second version, third version, fourth version sort of thing. So... Yes, I'll put them aside and time to make myself a Chanel style tweed jacket. Anyway, that is it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you like that this is something a little different. Sewing adjacent rather than actual sewing. But I don't know. I was like looking at all the different things in fabric stores. These netting and and tools this collection they're just the most gorgeous colors like you never see these colors they even had a beige like a, a true beige one rather than a cream one. Oh my gosh i nearly bought the whole roll but it was like mushy it wasn't stiff like netting should be so plus you don't actually need it to have a certain color um to be useful anyway thanks again for watching and happy sewing oh you can actually see the snake fabric see if you sort of look it's the one that i've sort of half on the left at the bottom of the screen there you can sort of see it